Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Angel and today I'll be sharing some more budget-friendly DIYs. Before we get started, as always, if you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel and click that little notification bell so that you won't miss out on any of my future videos. For this first project, we're going to be using one of these wood plank boards that I picked up at Dollar Tree and we're just going to go ahead and give that a light sanding to take off all the little grains and of course we are going to be using some of Dollar Tree spackling. Now in all of today's projects I am going to be using this little spatula thing. I picked this up at Dollar Tree as well. I think it's for a Cricut but it actually works really well for all these projects. And of course, I'll also be using a Dollar Tree stencil. Now, the key to using Dollar Tree spackling for these projects is you want to put some in a little container and then you're going to add a few drops of water because you want this to be a paste. And in the container, you can tell it's kind of dry, but if you make it into a paste, it's more easily spreadable. So I'm just going to take that Dollar Tree spatula and I'm going to put this over top of my stencil from Dollar Tree and you're just going to cover it. You don't need it to be very thick at all. You just want a light coating over your stencil. And I do recommend using some painter's tape to tape down whatever stencil you want to use. That way you're not getting any of this spackling where you don't want it. Once you have the stencil covered, you're going to go ahead and remove that painter's tape and very gently peel up the stencil. Then you will be left with this really pretty raised texture. Then I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to do the other sides of my wood plank. For the two smaller sides of my wood plank, I decided to do a different stencil, but it's still the same technique. And I do want to add really quick, if your spackling starts to dry out while you're doing this, you can just add a few more drops of water. This next part is totally optional, but I am just going to use some of my Waverly White Chalk Paint, and I'm going to paint the top of this. Now, if you do decide to paint over the raised stencil that we did, then I want to suggest that you are very gentle as you're painting over it. You don't want to break it off of the board or whatever you're using. So just be very gentle. And also, I think it would probably be easier to use a sponge brush over this. It's kind of difficult to get into those little cracks, but I wasn't too concerned about full coverage because I kind of wanted this to look a little rustic and vintage anyway. So I did just go ahead and only do one coat. So as you might have guessed, we are making a plant stand slash little decorative stool and I'm going to be using two of these 8 inch chunky slats from Dollar Tree. Now I did go ahead and I took 3 inches off of each one of these just using my miter box saw. I got it from Amazon and it's linked in the description below if you're interested. But you really don't have to cut these. You could just use four of these if you don't have a saw to cut them. But since I already had my saw on hand, I went ahead, I cut three inches off of them. And then I also cut these in half long ways. Hopefully that makes sense, but you can see them here. I just cut the three inches off of them and then I split them in half to make four little legs. Then I just flipped my board over and I kind of marked where I wanted to put the legs and then I'm just going to use some of Dollar Tree's wood glue to attach my legs.
And here is how it turned out. For this next project, we're going to be using some Jenga blocks from Dollar Tree. And we're going to be using some Dollar Tree wood glue to make 14 sets of three. Now I wanted to make a picture frame out of these and I know sometimes some people think that the Jenga block projects aren't the best, but I'm gonna show you how to make these look better. So once I had all my pieces done, I went ahead and arranged my frame the way I wanted it. And then I'm just gonna use some more of that Dollar Tree wood glue to put the frame together. Now you'll notice as I'm gluing this together, you can kind of see gaps in between the Jenga blocks. And I think that's why some people don't really like these projects, but I'm going to show you how to hide that. So we are again going to be using some of that Dollar Tree spackling. And again, I put it in a little plastic container and just added a few drops of water. And when I say a few drops, it's literally a few drops because you don't want this to be too watery you just want it in a paste and i'm just going to take that same little spatula cricket spatula whatever it is and i'm going to spread this all over my frame now as i'm doing this you can see i'm kind of pushing with the back of that spatula and I'm pushing the spackling into all those little gaps and then I'm taking the side and scraping off the excess. And this is really gonna help make your Jenga block frame look so much better. Once you get all the way around, you're just gonna take a wet paper towel or a wet washcloth and you're gonna wipe down your frame and just get all of that excess off. This comes off really easily with just a little bit of water. And then because I was having so much fun stenciling stuff with the spackling, I decided to put a stencil on my frame as well. So again, I'm just using one of those Dollar Tree stencils some painter's tape and the leftover spackling that I had. And just like with the little plant stand slash stool that I made, I'm just gonna use that spatula and put the spackling over top of my stencil. Now, one thing I forgot to mention when I was doing the plant stand stool, if you get a little too much of your spackling and it gets under your stencil you can always just go ahead and clean that up with your spatula now i just added in some of my macrame that i had you can totally use this for a picture or some artwork and it would be really beautiful this project was one that I did last year. It was actually my first spackling project that I ever did. And of course we're using that Dollar Tree spackling and I'm just gonna use some rubber gloves and I'm gonna spread this spackling all over this glass vase. Now this is just a vase that I had. You can use one of the Dollar Tree vases or even a Dollar Tree planter. Now once it was dry, I went ahead and I took a Dollar Tree sanding block and I am very lightly, very gently going to go over this. You don't want to completely sand this down because the whole point is to get that nice texture. Now last year when I made this face, I painted it this really pretty green color and I loved it. I actually kept it like that for almost a year and only recently has it changed. I do still have this vase. I still love it, but I did change the paint colors and I'll show you that at the end. So this is how the vase used to look and here's how it looks today.
for this project, we are just going to be using one of Dollar Tree's canvases. And as you can see, I went ahead and I removed the canvas from the frame first. To stain my frame, I am just going to go ahead and use the baby wipe hack. All you have to do is just take a baby wipe and dip it into some paint and then just rub that all over the frame to give it a nice stain. Then I'm just going to set that aside while I go ahead and work on the canvas. Now I'm going to go ahead and use some of this Dollar Tree painters tape and I'm going to go ahead and tape all four sides down. Then I am again going to be using some of that spackling and I did wash water it down again to make it into a paste and I'm just going to take my little spatula and start spreading it all over my canvas completely covering it and this is the part where you can really just do anything you want to do any design this is totally abstract and I am just going to rub this all over the canvas. Now, like I said, you can do any abstract design with this. And I decided to use this little comb pick and kind of run it through the spackling a few times. And remember, if you end up not liking something that you're doing, you can just go ahead and take your spatula and just remix that spackling up, which is exactly what I was doing here. I ended up not liking something I did. So as long as that spackling is still wet, you can always mess with it some more. I ended up letting this dry for a few hours and then I went ahead and removed that painter's tape and I'm going to trim off all of the edges and then just hot glue this to the back of my frame to get a beautiful abstract piece of art. And that is going to be it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed it and I will see you next time.